the promotion trap. I'm going to be providing you some suggestions this evening as to how to avoid the promotion trap and instead increase the possibility, increase the probability of having a professional, personally rewarding career. But first, let me give you some background on myself and how I first discovered the promotion trap. As was stated, I worked 36 years in the aerospace industry, and I was fortunate enough to have my dream job. I headed up the strategic uh, planning department for a major aeronautics company, and it had all the attributes that drove my passions. It was strategic in scope, multidisciplinary analysis. I got to interact with organizations throughout the entire company and corporation, as well as interact at very high levels with our customers, both domestic and international. And what also was appealing, it, it was a type of job that I had a lot of control over how to scope it, how to shape it, how to make the job what I thought should be done. All these attributes are what made it appealing personally to me. Now, when I first became an executive, I had the opportunity to go to a two-week executive training course. This included team building exercises, but it also included a lot of psychological profiling. There were about 10 to 12 different psychological tests that we took. And it included what's your personality type and how do you react to stress and what's your approach to innovation, whole series of metrics. At the end of these two weeks, you then met with an executive coach. And for the executive coach, they would sit down and they would have all the results of your dozen or so psychological tests and they'd have your personality or your uh, resume of what your job description was. And what I was expecting was for her to look at these and say, here are your three areas of strength, and here's your 47 areas to <laughs> opportunities to improve. <laughs> However, that is not what happened. What happened was, she looked at my personality profile, she looked at my job description, and she said, thank God, finally, someone whose job matches their personality. <laughs> this wasn't what I was expecting. In fact, I asked her, I said, I don't understand, because I naturally would assume that people would gravitate to those jobs that would appeal to them, that would match their passions, that would make them want to come to work in the morning. And she said, no. That's the exception, not the rule. She said, typically what happens is people will take promotions either because they want the money, they want the prestige, or just because it's expected of them, even though it's to a position which doesn't match their personality, doesn't match their passions. She went on to say that the problem with this is that when you take a position that doesn't match what interests you, your stress level goes way up. Your performance goes down, usually. And the worst part of it is, you take it home with you. Divorce rates go up, you have more conflict with your children. This is what I call the promotion trap. So, you know, maybe I was naive up to this point, but afterwards my, I had this awareness, so I looked around. And unfortunately, she was right. 
It was amazing to me how many people I saw who were complaining about the work. I hate my job. Oh, and I, they were burnt out, they were stressed out. They weren't living a life consistent with their passion. I believe that this is one of the causes of the Peter Principle. And for those of you who don't know what the Peter Principle, it says that everything tends to go wrong because people raise to their level of incompetence. I would submit it's not necessarily to their level of incompetence, but that they tend to allow themselves to be promoted to positions that they don't enjoy, and because they don't enjoy, they don't perform as well. And a prime example of this is many times you have someone who has great technical skills, they take a management position even though they don't personally have the desire for management, they don't have the interpersonal skills, they don't have the management skills. And what happens is their performance goes down, their team's performance goes down, and the other loss is they're not doing the job in the technical field where they really have value added to the organization. Just one example. So, I have some suggestions to how to avoid the promotion trap. Number one, and these are steps that I would recommend that you do throughout your career, because your interests change, they mature. Identify your dream jobs. Even if you don't have the skills, even if you don't have the talent, all constraints aside, what would you love to do? And if you have difficulties defining your dream jobs, identify your nightmare jobs. What would you hate doing? <laughs> now, the reason why you do this is step two. Dissect your list. What are the attributes that would make them your dream or nightmare jobs? Is it because it involves a lot of travel or not? Working with people or not working with people? Structured, unstructured, technical, non-technical, what, whatever those characteristics are, true to yourself. Not what you think the right answer is, but what appeals to you. Once you have those lists, you can go to step three which is you apply these attributes to broaden your opportunities. All too often, people get fixated on one or a very narrow set of job opportunities they're trying to focus on and pursue, but in so doing, they may not get those, but they miss out on a whole variety of other jobs that have those same attributes. You need to open the aperture. It gives you much more opportunity to find those jobs that are right for you. Step four, build your toolbox. Just because you want a job doesn't mean you'll get it. You have to earn it. And the way you earn it is by building your toolbox, getting the skills, the capabilities in place that Whoever's going to hire you, or even if you're hiring yourself, you'll be successful. When I was a junior here at Purdue, I'm proud to say, uh, I was working on my aero engineering degree. And when I got to my junior year, I realized that while I thoroughly enjoyed the technical aspects of the job and of that curriculum, what I really wanted was to apply those technical skills in a broader, more strategic context. So what I did is I completed my degree. I didn't immediately switch because I wanted the technical skills. And I went to Cranert and I got my master's in business. Now what I was doing there was I was building my toolbox. 
I was getting the requisite skills, requisite capabilities in place so that I would be marketable to the types of jobs that would appeal to me. Step five, critically examine promotion offers. Now, if you're offered a promotion to a job that's your dream job, that matches your passions, it's a no-brainer, right? You take it, you run with it, and you smile all the way to the bank. <laughs> However, many times you'll get promotion offers to jobs that don't match what your uh, personality profile is, doesn't match your passions. So you have a decision to make. One option is to turn down the promotion. This is not typically done. There was a time in my career I was offered a major promotion. It was to a position I knew I would not enjoy, but it was a promotion. I turned it down. I knew it was risky. I didn't get another promotion offer for seven years. And yet, I will tell you that during those seven years, I had some of the most personally rewarding work experiences in my life. I never regretted that decision. Now, it may be you decide that you can't afford to uh, turn down that job for whatever reason. Maybe you need the money uh, temporarily. Maybe you uh, feel like the risk of not taking it is too great. So if you have to feel like you have to take a job, take a promotion that is to an assignment that you don't enjoy, immediately start to think through your exit strategy. Step one, even though you may not enjoy it, do that job to the best ability you can. Companies reward success. They don't reward failure. Number two, apply the previous steps. Look for some other assignments, be they lateral uh, or up, that match your personality profile. And number three, immediately start grooming your successors. Make it easy for the company to move you from that position. At the end of the day, you spend a tremendous amount of your adult life at work. You can't afford to waste that time doing things that cause you stress, that don't appeal to your passions, especially if the impact falls over to your personal life. You just can't afford that. Robert Frost, in his uh, fa famous poem, said, taking the path least traveled made all the difference. I would paraphrase that. I would suggest taking the path that's right for you makes all the difference. The important thing is to take the time continuously throughout your career to sit down and determine what's right for you. Thank you.